the nine justices on the United States Supreme Court, they receive up to 8,000 requests to hear a case every year. Out of those thousands of requests, they usually hear oral arguments in about 80 of those cases, touching on practically every aspect of American life, big or small. And at this very moment, they are waiting to hear if they will pick up one of those big cases, the kind of case that winds up in the history books, because the outcome here could determine who is on the ballot for millions of voters as they head to the polls this year. We are, of course, talking about a challenge to Donald Trump's spot on the ballot based on the 14th Amendment, which bars insurrectionists from running for office. As we reported on this program yesterday, the ex-president has now asked the Supreme Court to keep him on the ballot, appealing a ruling from the Colorado Supreme Court that found that Trump was ineligible because of his role on January 6th. The Colorado Republican Party has also asked the court to take the case. So have the voters who filed the challenge in the first place. What everyone agrees on is that the Supreme Court has to take action. The Washington Post reports that attorneys for the Colorado voters who challenged Trump's spot on the ballot wrote that, quote, if this court does not step in now, it risks millions of voters casting ballots for Trump in states where he appears on the ballot, only to find out later that he is disqualified. Clarity that only this court can provide is needed and needed soon. And as Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold points out, the deadline to certify the primary ballot is tomorrow. Take a listen to what she said just last night here on MSNBC. On Friday, I certify the candidates who can be placed onto the ballot, and then the county clerks will start printing the ballots next week. Colorado, of course, we have some of the best elections in the country, and that includes early voting in person, but also mail balloting. Uh, and then ballots for overseas and military voters will go out actually this month. So it's a quickly approaching timeline. I do hope that the Supreme Court acts with urgency uh, because Lawrence, frankly, the American people deserve to know whether a president can engage in insurrection and then be qualified once again to hold that office. And that is where we start this hour with former chairman at the RNC and my soon-to-be co-host on MSNBC's The Weekend, Michael Steele. Also joining us, former top official at the Department of Justice, Andrew Weissman, and former acting U.S. Solicitor General, Neil Katyal. Gentlemen, it is good to see you all. Neil, let's begin with you. Do you expect the Supreme Court to pick up this case? Yes. Um, I have the privilege of filing a lot of requests for the Supreme Court to hear cases. They often hear my requests and, and grant them. This is a case that has every hallmark of being granted by the Supreme Court. I expect it will be granted. The justices are meeting in the morning tomorrow, and I suspect by afternoon the court will set a date for the oral argument in this case. It just has gravity and importance, and in a world in which Trump has already been removed from two different ballots uh, in Colorado and Maine, I think the Supreme Court has to hear the case. Right. Andrew, there is gravity. There is also urgency. As we noted at the top of the program, the primary ballot in Colorado, it has to be certified tomorrow. Donald Trump is on the ballot right now because the state Supreme Court issued a stay of their ruling. Does the whole issue become moot if the justices don't weigh in today? Well, it doesn't become totally moot, even though the clip that you played suggests that it's going to become very complicated um, if they don't weigh in uh, today or, you know, tomorrow morning. Um, but it is possible for ballots to go out and then to have essentially a, the court rule that somebody cannot be on that ballot. And then it makes it very complicated for Colorado or Maine, whatever the states are. But I should also say that the other thing that could be very complicated is the court, I think, as Neil said, could easily take this case. I think he's completely right that they will take it. But it's possible that they lay out what the procedures are that states must follow if they are going to find somebody uh, cannot be on the ballot. In other words, they could disagree with the procedures mm -hmm. that Colorado um, filed. And then we're sort of back to square one, where we could have renewed applications. Of course, they could also find in ways that that, that possibility is not open to litigants. They could say that it needs to be only Congress that asks. There needs to be enacting legislation. But there are a whole range of possibilities here that could lead to additional state litigation about uh, Trump and whether he's qualified. 
Let's talk now about that range of possibilities, because last night our colleague Lawrence O'Donnell asked Jenna Griswold if we could end up with a patchwork of decisions, Trump on the ballot in some states, not in the others. Here's what she said. That could happen. Every state has different laws on the books, different procedures. Some states allow disqualified or unqualified candidates onto their presidential primaries. States like Colorado, we do not allow that. And that's why I think it's so important for the Supreme Court to step in. Uh, you know, this is a big question. It's novel. It's unprecedented because usually we do not have presidents trying to steal the presidency. Usually we do not have people who engage in insurrection run for president. The possibility of different procedures, the possibility of a patchwork, all incredibly dangerous, Neil, for our democracy, no? Um, it is. I, I do think, though, it's, it's worth trying to understand exactly what that patchwork is. Colorado has a fairly unique set of procedures, um, certainly some other states have it, but in which allow voters to challenge primary eligibility. Maine, for example, has a different process with the Secretary of State doing it. California has another process in which there isn't such the ability to challenge in quite the same way. And that reflects, you know, as Justice Brandeis said, the laboratory of our democracy. Democracy. I don't think that makes it hard for the Supreme Court to issue a ruling one way or the other on the big question. They can certainly say the 14th Amendment, Section 3, applies to presidents, for example, applies to insurrectionist presidents or presidential candidates and the like. And it may be in certain states that they can't remove Trump from the primary, but by the time it comes to him and the eligibility to hold office at the general vote, it may be that he's disqualified there. So you could get a variety of different approaches, but I think ultimately the big million dollar question is if you are an adjudicated insurrectionist, as he has been in Colorado after a five day evidentiary hearing, can you run for president of the United States? And I think the Supreme Court can answer that question and it will provide guidance to all 50 states. Yeah, Michael, that is the big million-dollar question. There are also other questions circulate, circulating, at least in the discourse, this question of whether or not this is democratic or undemocratic. I want to play something for you Chris Christie said today about why he's opposing these efforts to take Trump off the ballot. Take a listen. It makes him a martyr, and I think it makes him more likely than not to continue to foment division and discord in this country in a way that is destructive to our democracy. And I think I believe in democracy. I believe the people of this country will not reelect Donald Trump. I wonder what you make, Michael, of his point. Yeah, I hear that argument a lot. I'm sorry, I can't buy it. I can't buy it. It's just so it's just so past where Donald Trump is. I mean, the, the reality of it is whether Donald Trump, whatever his situation is, whether he's in this situation or another one, he's going to foment what he's going to foment. This is the man's nature. What makes you think that if Donald Trump gets his way, that he's suddenly going to play ball with everybody? that he's suddenly going to behave, that he's not going to engage in any further insurrection. If, by God help us, he gets elected in November, what happens in 2029, <laughs> right? When, when he's not eligible to run again and decides, you know, I kind of like the White House, the Lincoln bedroom, not so bad. I think I'll stay. So there's, there's always this element about him that says he's going to disrupt and destroy. Disrupt and destroy. That's the game. And so this piecemeal, oh, well, you know, with the American people have to make a choice. They made a choice in 2020. They unelected him. They threw him out of office. He didn't like the result and fomented insurrection to regain that office. The 14th Amendment applies here. What Colorado do, is doing here is correct, I think, constitutionally and un, under the principle because we've seen the action. It's not something that he may hit, may do. It's something he's already done. And I don't know why the heck people think he's going to do anything differently if we let him get his way. Right. Neil, to put what Michael said another way, whether Donald Trump uses the 14th Amendment challenges to make himself a martyr, as he sort of want to do, that has no bearing on the law, right? 
That's exactly right. And, you know, to call this undemocratic, no, it's part of our constitutional government. It's like, you know, Alicia, I can't vote um, for uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger to be president or Jennifer Granholm as much as I might want to vote for one of them because they're not natural born citizens. Our constitution takes that off the table. Our constitution takes off the table, you know, someone who's under 35 being able to run or a third term president. So it's not anti democratic, it's part of our constitutional system. And I would say the 14th Amendment founders actually laced into the text of the amendment a democratic solution. So if Trump is upset about being labeled an insurrectionist and barred from the ballot, he has the option under the 14th Amendment to go to Congress and get a vote on whether or not he should be reinstated to the ballot. That, to me, is the democratic way if you want to talk, you know, the language of, you know, voter choice and the like.